I'm a farmer. And it's my job to leave the environment and the land better than when I got there for my children, for their children, for the next generation. It's a historic farm, but you know, when you pull onto a piece of property like that and, and you can see the pristine environment and uh, at any time of the year, it just, it'll make the hair stand up on your arms. And, and we're glad to share that because we want them to see the beauty of what God's given us and, and, and that the wildlife and, and all of it coming together like that, you know, in such a pristine place. My name is Nick Matmickin. We farm approximately 2,400 acres of cotton. We have a long history here. My children are the sixth generation to live on this farm. I enjoy getting up and going to work every day. And I can go to work with my father, my daughter, my wife, my son, and my son-in-law. Doesn't get any better than that. This is the fourth cotton gin that's been on this farm in the last hundred years. So we are cotton farmers, cotton what pays the bills. It's what we do, it's who we are. About two years ago, we explored working with pheasants and quail forever. We thought there was a natural overlap of sustainability outcomes and actually helping the grower. Meanwhile, really helping the quail habitat here in Georgia. And this area is just so pretty, so unique, having the rolling hills, the beautiful cotton white in the scenery here. It just really makes sense to focus on how we can really improve bird habitats that everybody really wants to have here and help the grower be more profitable and more sustainable. When I first met Nick McMicken, he invited me to ride the planter with him. So uh, never had met the man before. And, uh, he stopped the tractor and let me on to make my pitch about habitat being a part of his uh, profitability and whole farm plan. And the first thing he said was, the only thing I've ever hunted was quail in my life, and I miss it. And it would be really nice to have that come back. You know, I grew up quail hunting. Um, but there's nothing finer than watching a bird dog work and watching quail. And, and hearing a bob white whistle, you know, and it used to be you could just walk out of your house and you could just hear it. Quail habitat really interacts and is important to meeting the 10 year sustainability goals for the cotton industry. Uh, whenever you take acres that are maybe not producing as efficiently as they could, if you take those acres and do something else with them, such as making habitat for the birds, for pollinators, and other species, it allows other acres perhaps to be more efficient the excitement really takes off. And Nick is someone who is showing that. He's incorporating all the latest precision technology to make the greatest decisions he can. U.S. cotton is the gold standard, and the reason being is because we are the best stewards of the land in the world. And, and the work with the National Cotton Council, Cotton Incorporated, the Cotton Board, all these organizations which I'm very fortunate to be able to serve in. Cotton Incorporated's mission is to increase the demand and profitability of cotton through research and promotion. And today, that really does revolve quite largely around sustainability. We're, we are number one for a reason, and we intend to stay that way. You know, the connection to the land, the farmer is the ultimate environmentalist. If we don't look after the land, then it won't look after us. So we're constantly evaluating what we're doing on our land to try to improve it. The, the precision ag is what helps us to enable that. Now we can see that visually of what we do and we're employing NDVI technology to identify hot spots in fields so that it could help with insect management and so forth. You go along with that and now that we have harvest monitoring and yield maps, we have layers in a toolbox that we call it that we can make decisions that help us to ensure that we're profitable. So whenever you find a part of your, your land or part of the field that maybe isn't producing a, a profitable, you know, identify those areas, take them out of production, and actually capture carbon in the ground and create habitat for birds, bees, pollinators, et cetera. 
And meanwhile, focus on making the other parts of your land more profitable. That all helps the grower and sustainability. His connection with the land really goes deep. He's been here for a long time with his family. The mindset on the whole landscape has shifted, leaving these corridors of, of drainage ditches and different buffers around fields from tree encroachment. He's letting go back to native plants as they emerge. He's kind of letting it just happen. With that shift, he's recognizing less loss of soil, less erosion, water quality by the cover crops he's implementing on some of these areas. In some places, he misses the termination of cover crop he's recognizing the biodiversity that's in that area that he's left behind. And it's really exciting for Nick because it's become a no-brainer for him. He recognizes that this is the way it should be. I grew up quail hunting with my grandfather and my father, and sadly, numbers have dropped. So studies have shown that when you implement field borders through perennial grasses, pollinator species on active working lands, you not only are improving habitat in the acres that you have implemented as a field border, but you're exponentially improving the habitat quality for adjoining areas and sometimes even the crop itself. I hope that my son and my son-in-law will see this improve so that we'll be able to get back to doing that again because, you know, it, it's, it was a family affair that we did that I miss. All these farmers that I'm aware of have been farming cotton for all their life and usually are following a long line of history from their family producing cotton on the same land, so their pride for the land is there. Bob White quail are part of the land in the southeast, so when a cotton producer finds an opportunity to Im improve their productivity, their crop quality, but they can also bring back this unique icon that we have in the southeast, um, it's very exciting. Quail hunting and, and, and quail in general and cotton both, they are true icons, you would say, or whatever, but the thing unique to quail is it does not take a big area for habitat to maintain them. Quail Forever and Pheasants Forever team is here to work with growers. We work with a producer and create a unique conservation plan and production plan that is specific to each grower. This is not a one-size-fits-all program. This is very prescribed to each individual and each grower's goals. Our team is here to utilize any and all conservation plans that may be available from the USDA programs, NRCS, FSA, anything that you find would fit your current operation and not impede its productivity. Contact Quail Forever, contact NRCS, talk to somebody, talk to, call me, call any other dad that's doing it, you know, and they can help you make, get you started and, and, and get you on the road to helping everything. When you can get reimbursed for the habitat that you're uh, implementing on the um, acres that are negative in return on investment. That takes away that negative investment from your crop production and it spreads out the profitability across the whole farm. You know, they're not big acres, but what they do is, you know, it's a win-win for everybody when we do that. And the environment, the farm, the farmer, everybody wins there. <laughs>